here's a scene that probably looks more complex than it really is to draw. Because in essence, this is just a box. It's a long box coming down here, and there's another box that comes down over the top of it at right angles. And there are a couple of very shallow boxes stuck onto the front of this box, and there's a couple of them further down the end too. And then there's another box that sits at right angles down the far end. It's easy to get distracted with all of this detail, but the detail is just stuck onto the box. It's the boxes that are the key parts. If we get the boxes correct, if we get the perspective angles and the proportions of the boxes correct, we've gone most of the way to having our drawing look right. But if we get them wrong, they will almost certainly look obviously wrong. If the boxes are correct, we can actually have quite a lot of the decoration that we stick on not quite right, and it won't be so obvious. So the key thing with this scene is not to be distracted by all the ornamentation, but to get the basic shapes correct. And then with the detail, not to get caught up in trying to draw the detail, but to draw the effect of the detail as I've done in videos with trees and flowers, the Australian bush, and also some interior and other architectural scenes. Let's start. This drawing took me about 60 minutes, maybe a couple of minutes under to do in real time. So I'm starting with a, a 0 0.3 millimeter pen, and I will use a 0 0.2 millimeter pen for that center section, the intersecting box, if you like, and I use a 0 0.1 millimeter pen for the sections of the Louvre beyond that. So as I mentioned in the intro, the important thing is really to get the angles right. Now, it's an incredibly complex detailed building and the scale I'm drawing at also means there's just not going to be room to do anything but to suggest the detail that's on this building. There's really almost nothing I'm going to be drawing exactly, precisely which is great in a way because it does encourage a fairly gestural free way of drawing. But you can see why it's so important at this stage that if I work at anything, if I spend time on anything, it's going to be getting these perspective angles correct because this view from an upper story window on one of the sides of the courtyard looking along results in a very severely foreshortened view. And so it does cause the angles to increase and to go from being reasonably wide apart at the left hand side to being very close together at the right hand side. And if we don't get the angles correct, then when we get to the, the, the right end, the right side end of this wing of the courtyard, it'll be too high or it'll come together to a ridiculous pinpoint. And so we really have to get those angles right so that they end up with the right size space between them on the far end of this foreshortened wall. And of course that affects everything we place in between the upper and lower line of each of the horizontals. So this section I'm doing now is going to have the most detail be simply because it's closest. So again, this takes me longer to draw than any other comparable part in the scene. But it's important that this sort of looks right and gives a sense of what is in the reference in terms of the decoration, because it's seeing this that will trigger the brain to presume this is what it's seen as it looks at the line work further along. It will read into the line work lines I haven't drawn from the memory of this section that I'm drawing now. So, and, and possibly from the memories of other times looking at the museum. So the important thing is that the perspective looks right. It doesn't look contrived or awkward or, or the scale somehow doesn't work. It's important that, that the angles are correct. Everything else is really approximate. But as I mentioned too before, this is a fairly severely foreshortened length of facade. And that means as we move from left to right, it, it compresses, it narrows with greater and greater intensity. And so when we get to doing the sections we're doing now on the other side of that central part, it's in an incredibly small space and it can actually be a problem 
remembering or having seen clearly and even having drawn how much detail is there. It can make us want to draw too much when we actually get to that same detail but very severely foreshortened. And particularly if, as I do, we choose a finer pen, so it is possible to perhaps be at least tempted to draw too much detail. I have uh, I actually have switched to a 0.2 millimeter pen now for, for this section. So I really just did that closest part in the, the 0.3 pen. You'll notice that I haven't gone down and done the lower story. And that's really quite deliberate because I feel like while I'm moving from left to right and I'm getting a sense of the foreshortening of the compression on the vertical as we, as we move along on the narrowing, I feel that this sets a certain rhythm, a certain tempo, and I don't want to risk losing that rhythm of how quickly the various architectural elements narrow. So I've decided I really want to go right the way along in this kind of most central horizontal element of the facade. Because once I get to the other end, I can go down easily enough. And in some ways, if I don't quite get some of the vertical elements positioned correctly first time, I may, that may not be obvious till I get to the very end. I can see, oh, well, this section takes up too much space. And maybe if there's just a few lines, a few guidelines or a little bit of detail, because let's face it, there's just lots of vertical lines, maybe I can correct it at that point. But if I've drawn what's below it, it's very difficult to change really anything at that point because I've, I've put too much detail now at the wrong scale of the of foreshortening. So it, it helps me to keep my options open. But I, I did decide to go um, upwards um, a bit. And I think that's just partly because I was wanting to progress the drawing a little bit. Uh, and so while I was a bit fresher, I wanted to have a bit of um, space for this. I was thinking this was probably going to be the, 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 the biggest challenge, and I suspect it was. It's probably the weakest part of the, the drawing. I've gone a little too high, um, and so the, that, um, that upper right portion of that, that box now is, is proportionally a little bit too high compared to the reference. It should be a, a, a bit narrower, but that's how it is and probably a little bit of overworking trying to position the caryatids, the, the female sculptures that are here. And I also got into trouble because I'd forgotten that this actually isn't the uh, Pavillon Richelieu. It's a different part. It's the, the Pavilion of the Clock. It's a different part of the Louvre. And so I was thinking these, these sculptures were actually meant to look different to how they do look. And I was trying to draw the ones I've drawn so often and then I finally realised the reason they look a bit strange is because they're totally different sculptures arranged differently. So again, our, our memory can be deceptive if we're not observing carefully. I, I positioned the, the chimney without actually drawing it to help me, and there are some appalling lines with this section of the mansard roof, because the chimney's position was important um, with drawing this uh, large rounded mansard section on each side of it. So I haven't quite got the, the angle of the roof, the top horizontal part of that roof. It, it should have angled up slightly or at least come down more on the left hand side. However, fortunately, the, the main detail is further down. I videoed this pretty much in three 20 minute sections and I've just now started the third of those three 20 minute sections. So you can really see what I mean when I say that the tempo picks up as we progress our drawing. It becomes easier and faster to really fill in the various elements now that we have a more significant, a larger part of our drawing that we can reference from. There's far less time spent positioning little dots and specks and measuring angles and, and just standing back and looking at the angles and saying, does this look right in my drawing compared to the, compared to the reference? I mean, it is a fairly complex scene. There are lots of repeated things. And sometimes when there are lots of things the same, it can make it a bit confusing. I did get lost once or twice along the facade, 
But equally, that also means that that thing's not quite right. It's a very forgiving architectural design for that. And I, I do want this, this central band to be the, the main visual draw card. And so I'd want a little less, if you like, detail in this lower section and certainly less in the section beneath that. And if you look closely, uh, when I get to parts of this further along and really all the parts in the lower half of this where the column bases are, I make almost no effort except at the very start of the closest part of the facade to actually line up or align or link up the horizontal and the vertical lines. It's really enough to just have a sense of alternating horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical little bits as I define the, the squared bases that the columns sat on. It really is a, a, a much better situation to be suggesting the detail and that's partly why I could draw it so quickly because drawing the effect of something is always faster than drawing an exactness of it and usually unless it's a remarkably careful and precise architectural drawing usually looks more effective as well but at this point I am I am pretty um, pleased the, the important thing is that all the architectural elements that are on the horizontal where they line up on the horizontal they they keep the same perspective patterns the fan shape that you've often heard me talk about of lines from the uh, from the eye level up or down needs to be followed by not just the actual horizontal lines that might be in the facade but things such as the tops of windows that line up on those same perspective or within those same perspective angles they need to be uh, appropriately angled for their part their position in the fan and so that's important and you'll often see me do a do a line of dots going from left to right and then stop and think mm, okay does that look right the the thicker crossbar in the upper part of the windows is is if that follows this line does that sit within the fan angles appropriately and now I position the the lower part and I do a few dots just to along the bottom horizontally just to remind me where I want the drawing to finish I wish I'd done it uh, vertically on the right as well because for some reason I was uh, thinking I had about a five or six millimeters more than I was planning to draw on. But you can see how quickly now the suggestion of the architecture at this far end can be drawn. It really becomes remarkably quick and also how I just suggest the, the bases of the columns and the little sort of plinth sections they sit on. The important thing, as I said, is the, is the perspective angles are correct. If we get those correct, the building's 90% looking right. And, and this is a, an architecture that, while it looks daunting, is very forgiving of imprecision in the actual sort of detail because there is simply so much of it. We really can uh, afford to gesturally draw the effect of it. It's really no different to my approach in drawing trees. I hope you have a go at it. It really is a great experience to draw. G'day, I'm Stephen Travis. Look, I hope you found this interesting and I hope you feel that you can give it a go and use it to draw the effect of architecture rather than the detail. You'll find it, of course, on my channel community page. But look, whatever you draw, however you're drawing it, make sure you have fun and I'll see you next time. But before then, there's a couple of minutes of real time of this drawing if you're interested in that. See you next time.